All right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Structure Free. Chica, chica. Learning. And in this video, we go back to reinforce concrete analysis and design. And we're going to be talking about beam behavior at ultimate end of this video. You should be able to describe the theoretical moment of a reinforced concrete beam at ultimate. And what we're going to do is explain the equivalent stress block that's used to simplify our analysis. All right, so to get it started, I've got here a reinforced concrete section that has a width B, a height H, and a depth from the extreme compression fiber to the center of the tension reinforcement D. And this is the area of steel reinforcement. You know, the thing that we want to consider here first is ultimate. And what does ultimate mean? An ultimate means that we are using or reaching the maximum usable strain of the concrete in compression. And this is how we define failure. And if you're in, if you're using the ACI code in ACI chapter 22.2.2.1, that is a mouthful. There, the maximum usable compressive strain of concrete is defined as 0.003. And so what that means is we start our analysis by looking at a strain profile of the reinforced concrete beam. And another assumption that we make is that the strain is linear in our beam cross section. So we start with the strain profile. We have compression at the top, tension at the bottom. I'm going to use a blue line and this will be my strain profile. And the value here will represent my maximum compressor strain. And MN is what we call the nominal moment strength or the theoretical moment strength when our concrete reaches this maximum usable strain all right and that's the beginning of our analysis this value right here is 0 0.003 and that really starts us off in terms of helping us define what the stress profile will look like and so in a nutshell this is the definition of ultimate when our concrete reaches this 0 0.003 strain now wherever the the neutral axis or where the strain is zero, there is my neutral axis of the section, which I'll just draw with the green line here. And, you know, I, I don't know what the value of the strain in the steel is, but that's going to be of interest to me later. This right here, this epsilon S, all right? And that's going to depend on what the depth of the neutral axis is. And that's going to help us decide whether we have a beam that's legal or illegal according to the code. And so now what we can do is draw the stress profile based on the strain value that I am aware of, or the strain values that I'm aware of here for the stress profile. Now we have these two materials and the stress profile, so all of our concrete is cracked in tension and really everything above the neutral axis is in compression and everything below is in tension. But really the only thing resisting tension is the, is the steel reinforcement. And the stress in the steel reinforcement depends on the strain, which we don't know. And so here, this, I'll just say that the stress here that's, res that's occurring at the tension reinforcement is FS, this arrow here, FS, and that's the stress in the steel. And that FS depends on the strain value, which means that we have to look at the stress strain curve of steel. And in reinforced concrete, we use an idealized stress strain curve for steel. And Really, this idealized, some people call it elastic, perfectly plastic, but the stress in the steel depends on what the strain value is. And here, this would be the yield strength of steel, and this would be the yield strain. This graph right here, in terms of an equation, is really Fs is equal to the modulus of elasticity times the strain in the steel, which is Hooke's law, but that number, whatever that number is, has to be less than or equal to Fy. All right, so this equation right here, if I were to actually plot it, would look like this line right here. So that's just the graphical representation. And the stress in the steel, again, I don't know how many times I gotta say this, but the stress in the steel depends on the strain in the steel, and then the strain in the steel depends on what the depth of the neutral axis is, all right? And so here, the other part that we need to look at is the stress distribution of the concrete in compression. I'm gonna look at the strain value at each layer, right? at each layer of the cross section. I want to know what the strain value is. That's going to correspond to with different points here 
on the strain profile. And then using the strain values, I'm going to be able to go to a stress strain diagram of my concrete in compression. And this is what my stress strain curve might look like. And we probably called this point right here FC prime. And this was the maximum usable strain of the concrete, which in this case is 0.003. And typically the strain at which this ultimate compressive strength FC prime occurs is right here. This is 0.002. For instance, let's start here. So here I have a strain value of zero. So on my stress strain curve, I'm right here and my stress value is zero. Hey, if I went to 0 0.002, well, 0 0.002 would be like, let's see, one, two, it would be right around here, 0 0.002, the dot would be right there. The value of my stress at 0 0.002 is FC prime right here. So at this point right here, I have a stress value of FC prime. So I'm gonna call this the largest stress value right here. This is FC prime. If I look at the maximum usable str strain, this blue dot right here, I'm looking at this point. And if I look, oh, if I go up from the strain value of 0.003, that stress value all the way across is, is definitely less than FC prime. And that would be somewhere around here. I'll put a little arrow like that. Okay. And then if I keep repeating this process, so here, if I go like some point here, I'll go up from that strain value. And then I go across right here like this between, I'll have some number between FC prime and and the, the stress value at 0 0.003 strain. So I would probably have a an arrow that looks like right here like this. And if I keep following this pattern, like even from right here, if I went like 0 0.001 strain, like if I go to this point right here, boom, like this, and then I would have another value right here of stress and I might be like right here, like this. And what I would notice is that the shape of my compression stress block would look very much like the stress strain curve of the concrete right here, okay? It would look like this, and I would have this stress distribution that looks like this. So as I examine each point on the strain profile, that correlates to a stress value from the stress strain curve in, from the concrete, and that will let me draw the compression block right here, this compression stress profile. In order for me to analyze this, I would want the equivalent force resultant here. So if I could calculate the volume of the stress block, there would be a compression force resultant in the concrete. The steel has a force resultant, and if I just take this, I'll call that TS. The centroid of the compression force resultant would be somewhere here, and I'll call that Y bar. And if I wanted to determine the theoretical moment strength of this cross-section, what I would do here is, well, shoot, I would say, hey, to locate the neutral axis, I'm going to apply section equilibrium, which is this TS equals CC, and that will help me find this CNA value. So from this relationship, I should be able to output CNA, the depth to the neutral axis right there. After I apply this force equilibrium, I'm going to determine the nominal moment strength by applying moment equilibrium. And so, for instance, if I took some of the moments about the compression force resultant, so this point right here, I would have, there would be a nominal moment associated with that force couple, the tension and the compression. And if I took some of the moments, I would get that MN is TS times, well, this arm right here, this is D, and this would be D minus Y bar. This would be TS times D minus Y bar. If I took some of the forces about the tension force resultant, I would just get CC times D minus Y bar. And that's essentially, in a nutshell, how I would calculate the nominal moment strength of a cross-section. But the challenge here is trying to calculate the force resultant from this stress-strain distribution. You know, you could do this numerically just 
like a computer, but we want a more convenient process than having to integrate this numerically so that we calculate the C sub C. You know what I'm saying? Integrating that, you know, unless you're like an awesome grad student, right? If you're a grad student, you can probably set up a numerical integration, calculate C sub C, and be like, yo, what's up? You know? <laughs> but most people don't want to do that every time. All right. In order to, to simplify our calculations, most of the time we use an equivalent stress block. All right. So the way that we interpret our stress profile. All right. All right. All right. So instead of trying to numerically integrate this, what we are allowed to do according to the code. So what we get to use is instead of this stress strain curve for concrete, we get to use a nice rectangular stress block to approximate the force resultant and its location. So here I'll draw a rectangle. It doesn't go all the way down to the neutral axis. It goes right about here. And that's because we want the resultant to be in the right the same approximate location we call this depth of the equivalent stress block a and a a is equal to beta 1 times cna right and beta 1 is a modifier really on the concrete so that what we have for our equivalent stress block will match the experimental results of all these tests that were done back in like the 60s and 70s you know to develop this code and here the stress associated with this equivalent stress block is 0.85 FC prime like this. And the force resultant will we'll call boom like this C sub C compression force resultant in the concrete. And the location is in the center of this, this equivalent stress block. This would be Y bar. If I have a rectangular cross section, check it out on the cross section itself. Whoa, that didn't move the way I wanted it to move. Yo, there we go. What's up? All right. And here here, check it out, check it out. It, here is that neutral axis line. The depth A, here this red area is the area or the cross-sectional area where this equivalent stress block is acting. This is the area that we're saying is in compression for a rectangular reinforced concrete beam. This area would be A times B. And the centroid of this area, which I'll put in green, boom, right there, that is the location of this resultant Y bar, all right, this C sub C. And this is the equivalent stress block. And what it does is it, it totally simplifies our calculation for this compression force resultant. I mean, we're talking about a volume of a rectangle as opposed to integrating and and the steel still the same so here out it hasn't really changed so i better use the same color and here this is still this is still fs boom again that still depends on the strain value and the resultant here is t sub s which we would calculate as the area of steel reinforcement times the stress in the steel reinforcement. And instead of integrating to calculate this compression force resultant, the stress times area, this would essentially be for the compression force resultant, this would be 0.85 FC prime times the area in compression, which again, if it's a rectangular reinforced concrete beam, this would be 0.85 FC prime times A times B. All right. And this simplification helps us apply force equilibrium up here so that we can locate the CNA relatively quickly. And what the heck is beta one? Well, again, I, like I said, it's a modifier. It helps our equivalent stress block match the experimental tests that were done on beams. And this is from the ACI code. Looking at these equations, I, I mean, for most students, this looks like mumbo jumbo, dude. A way I like to present this is if we just graph it out. And so if I were to graph this out, like here is beta one versus FC prime, we start at 2,500 PSI. So this is in units of PSI. And starting at that point to 4,000 PSI, we have a constant value up here of beta one of 0.85. So essentially what we're saying is between 2,500 and 4,000 PSI, we just have a straight line. And then from 4,000 to 8,000 PSI, 1,000 PSI here, I'll put like 0.65, and there's a point right here, and we decrease 
we are going linear. There, we have a linear function that does that. And then from there on out, we just have 0.65 all the way across. That is essentially what this beta one value is. All right, so hopefully in this video, you got a nice idea and overview of our stress distribution at ultimate and then how the how we approximate this this compressive stress distribution using a equivalent rectangular stress distribution or stress block. All right, take it easy. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Sector